The next month's venue, uh, our meetups, if you don't already know, happens on the first Tuesday of every month. And our next uh, next month next uh, month uh, you know, meetup venue hasn't been confirmed. If you know a, a cool place, you know, uh, because the hardware meetups shifts around, um, it sometimes it goes to Microsoft, sometimes it goes to one once it went to Google. If you know a venue that could be appropriate for hosting us, please let any of the organizers know. And now I hand over the mic to Jinja. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming out this evening. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks, Microsoft. Um, running bootcamp with PowerPoint, uh, so I, I try. Uh. <laughs> okay. So anyway, today right, I'm, I'm here. I'm quite excited to share about this thing I've been trying. Uh, actually, it's been a while already. Uh, I thought about um, building this lapel. Uh, it's it looks like this. Quite cute. Uh, it's very small. If you can't see, it's on the screen here. Uh, I I made this and I thought I'd share about the whole process of how I came about doing it. Uh. <laughs> so. Uh, Okay, the story starts like that. Um, I saw this tweet uh, and then I was like, hey, very cute. Eh? Uh, because, okay, uh, maybe like about two ish years ago when there wasn't Flexbox, right? Um, it was very hard to settle things for the game in CSS. Uh. Yeah, so this was a running yeah, joke. So I was like, hey, quite cute, uh, but I don't know where I can put a. I don't know where I can put a badge. So uh, I thought I need to look for a medium that's more suitable. And then I thought, hey, why not? Like a lapel. Uh. And then uh, I thought, I thought for a while, and then the idea just grew on me. Like, It'll work out because uh, it's visually quite interesting. Lapos usually have a bit of like metal, and then it's shiny, and then you have paint on it, and then it gives it some vibrance. Um, it, it's kind of like in between, like, you know, a conference badge, which is quite big, and um, I don't think you bring that around so much, and a sticker, which is like not much feel. Uh, you don't really have a feel when you have a sticker here. So it sits, it sits in between, and you have a lapel. You can put it in a bag, you can put it on a shirt, wherever you like it. Uh. So uh, I think the biggest um, problem in this way is it's a bit expensive. To come up with the tooling, the labor to build a lapel. Because a lapel is made out of metal, it's cast out, and then it's a lot of effort. Uh, so I think cost might be a factor in this. So, right, uh, I thought, hey, maybe you can use PCBs, uh, printed circuit boards, because um, they are very interesting medium. It's very accurate for most parts. Uh, it's got a very nice copper layer, it's shiny, and then you have paint as well, your solder mask and your switch is actually paint. Uh, it's affordable because when you buy um, when you buy PCBs, right, they charge you by your use, usage, uh, and then uh, if you have something like this size, uh, it's really cheap. So you can try uh, if, it, if it messes up, it's okay. Uh. Then uh, there's a lot of potential to it because you can like you know um, put like electronics on it, LEDs, a Bluetooth Low Energy, NFC. Because at the end of the day, right, it's still a circuit board. Uh, you can put electronics on it. It's the magic part is the pin here, uh, which I'll get onto. The problem with it, right, is that you have a very limited palette. Um, you don't have a lot of colors to choose from. Uh, or rather, you just start with a few sets that your fab gives you. Uh, your your board house will have a few colors for you to choose from. So how to make it a, a lapo? This is the magic sauce. Like I was on AliExpress and then I saw like for seven dollars you can buy hundred of these pins here, which I have a lot of later if you all want to try come to me. <laughs> free free, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you just need a five mm base and I found out you can actually solder to these. They, they accept solder very well. You just add your solder as you normally and then you add it on top and then you heat it up and then you get this, very nice, it's very solid. It's been on my back for a few quite a while already. I came to the hackway a few times with it. It's just very it's very discreet, and nobody really sees it around. <laughs> yeah, okay, so um, let's go on to the design. So like I said, you have a bit of constraint in design because um, you have like five-ish colors. The top layer is a six screen, usually white, sometimes black. And then a mask, uh, your board house decides this. Uh, my board house usually uses purple, you can't change it, unfortunately. Uh, usually you know it as green, uh, like green circuit boards, right? But nowadays you have a lot of colors to choose from. Uh, you have your copper layer, which is usually plated with either silver, uh, sorry, tin or gold. And lastly, you have the substrate, which is the fiberglass part in the middle. Uh, that holds the whole thing together. So uh, with this in mind, with these color constraints, right? I thought uh, uh, I'll make something that's very similar to a very popular you know, HTML5 wood mark. So the center design is what I came up with. This is the final design. And it's composition of a few layers. Uh, I'll get to that. So this thing right, is a composition of uh, five layers. Uh, I didn't use a silk screen because uh, silk screens are not very accurate. Uh, it's for visual identification, it's actually not required electrically, so uh, they usually are a bit lax with it, so I just keep the silk screen all together. I started from the solder mask, which is purple layer, see on top, and then below that you have the copper layer, and in the middle you have the substrate, which is usually fiberglass, it's a bit yellowish grey. And the bottom part is the opposite, like, like you flip it around, you get the same thing. Uh. Yeah. So the individual layers look like this. If you break it apart, this is the design. So uh, if you have your design done out like that already, you're uh, pretty much done already. You just need to stack it together in a way that your board house can understand it. So, with this, uh, if you have like, uh, maybe if you use like um, Altium or Eagle, I think you probably know your way around already. But if you're like me and I don't really know my way around, I use uh, this, um, I don't know if you call it KiCat or KiCat is an ongoing thing. 
Uh, okay, so I call it Kiai Cat. Uh, it's open source, it's very nice to work with. And uh, there's, component, there's this uh, tool in it, it's called binmap to component. And what you usually do, right, is if you have like custom components, if you're using a component that's not available in common libraries, you use this to come up with a footprint. And um, you can use it to import your graphics. It's not meant to do it, but you can do it. The problem is that you can't choose, like, um, you only have, like, you can choose from the front uh, silk screen and uh, solar mask, you can't choose, like, proper layers. So, when you're when you done exporting it, right, you have to go to the file, open it in the text editor, and then you search and replace everything that says, like, front, copper, uh, front solder mask with uh, front copper layer. But it works, uh, it works very well. And lastly, you want to take note of your DPI settings, because, uh, let's say you design it, like, 4K and 4K, right, and then you want it to be, like, a certain size, like, you have to do the math. If you do it wrongly, you get a really big level, uh, not really nice. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, when you're done with this, you, uh, you, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, when you're done with your uh, components, right, uh, you just open your uh, schematic editor, sorry, your, your PCB editor, right, and then you just stack everything on the same spot, because you, you're done with the hard part with it. Just stack everything on the same spot, uh, you draw the board outline, and then you save it. And then, in this format, right, your board house should be able to understand it. But just to be sure, uh, what I usually do is I check it online. Uh, I use OSH Park, uh, the uh, US Board Foundry, very nice. Uh, their website is very good, even if you don't buy from them, right, you can use their website to check your work if it's okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, in the end, I usually buy from there because like, you see this design in my hand here, right? Uh, three of them cost me uh, $2.55 USD. Shit. Nice. Yeah, it's very nice. It's, it's cheaper than China, I'm surprised. And it's, the quality is really good. Like, uh, Here's the thing, uh, uh, they use, uh, when you have exposed copper layers, right, usually what the board house will do is they'll plate it. In China, they use tin, but uh, over here they use gold, which is really nice, very shiny, it doesn't tarnish. Yeah, so uh, I went to buy it, and then when you buy it after a month, right, you arrive. Uh. So assembly, right, is usually you get a board, like, oh, yeah, this, from, this is from China, you can see, more. this is like silvery, right, yeah. So when you get it, right, usually you have, they, they're conjoined like that because they have CNC it out for you. You have to break it off, so you break it off, you have your little tabs here, and then when you have these tabs, right, you need to remove them, you file it down. And then uh, afterwards, right, um, for your pad, you can just um, tin the center first, and then you tin the needle as well. There's a needle, like, you just tin the other side. Put it together, heat it up, and then the whole thing just melt together. Is like, that soldering, right? Yeah, so it's, it's very straightforward, very simple, very nice. And then maybe you want, uh, just some tips, uh, you want to use a large soldering tip because there's a lot of heat capacity, you want to really just heat it up and then do it once, or you don't want to co-join. Uh. And uh, if you have a gold-plated thing like this, right, you don't want to get soldered on places that have copper because you'll change the gold to silver unless you intend for that to be an effect. Uh. So that's it really, like, that you, you've really done it really. Like, just like that, you have a design that's like this, very simple, very nice. Then um, the takeaway is I, I feel uh, uh, printed circuit boards are actually like uh, a very interesting medium. Like you can use them for art, for graphic design, maybe a name card or uh, like, you know, next conference or whatever. You can just use it. Uh. Uh, it's durable, it's quite affordable. It's very accurate except for the silk screen, which I don't use. And uh, you only need a little bit of labor. You just break it up, fold it down a little bit, and then you're done. And um, I thought about some improvements, like um, there are a bit of caveats. Like you see, uh, these are circuit boards. They don't really do anything to the sides because you don't need to do anything to the sides on a circuit board. But here it's, uh, it's bare fiberglass. Maybe you want to paint it over. And then, um, Yes, another thing also, which I read online, uh, this was on Hack a Day, and then uh, there were some people commenting, they said you could try using nail polish. I don't use nail polish, but if you have advice, uh, you can let me know. Uh, I think it's an interesting idea. Maybe you can have uh, glittery things on it. I, I, don't, I don't know, maybe. Uh, yeah, and uh, another thing is, uh, right now what, I, what I've been doing is I'm soldering this pin down, but the thing is, instead of soldering, right, if you don't have a soldering iron or if you're just not comfortable with soldering, you can try using epoxy. I think it'll work out just fine as well. That's an idea. I've never tried it, but I think it'll work out. And yeah, like I said previously, uh, uh, usually it's a mistake if you get um, a tin on, on a gold layer. But if you want like, a gold and silver, like, maybe Christmas Eve effect, right? it's, if, you can, if you want to do it intentionally, you can like, just tape it up and, and tape it over and then you clean it up a little bit, you'll get gold and silver, which is um, an idea like, if you want a different tone. Because you're limited like five colors, right? Yeah. So that's it, really. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you have like, questions, if you want tins, you can come and find me after this. Yeah. Questions? Questions? Yes? So, it's, so it's essentially still a circuit board, right? Yeah, it is. Have you ever thought of bringing for them and bake things in it? Have you? Uh, I consider, but this, this one was a, bit, uh, was, was a bit funny because I did it in Photoshop and then I don't have my components in like, uh, like my, you know, my electronic footprints and my drill points, right? I don't have them in like a PSD or a PNG, so it's a bit tricky. But I did consider because Photoshop gives you a lot of creativity. You can like curve traces. You can't do that in KiCad yet, but you can do that in Photoshop. Yeah, it's, it's very possible. Questions? Questions? Any 
No questions. Okay. If not, thank you.